Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. Joining us this morning is Jaffa Jaffa, the editor of Daily Nigerian, the media house responsible for the published video clips showing Kano State Governor Ganduji allegedly receiving bribe from a contractor. But before we speak to him, let's take a look at the video of the story so far. Okay. Video clips of Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduji allegedly receiving part payment for a $5 million bribe from a contractor were first published by Daily Nigerian on October 14, 2018. The governor immediately denied the allegations in a press statement, claiming it is a doctored video which is politically motivated. Kano State, popularly known as the center of commerce in Nigeria, is one of the key determinants of the country's presidential elections winner, and Governor Gunduje is an avid supporter of the Buhari second term presidential bid. On Thursday, Jafar Jafar, the editor of Daily Nigerian, appeared before the Kano State Assembly Investigative Committee to defend the authenticity of the video clips. During his cross-examination, he insisted on the genuineness of the tapes and also released a statement to that effect. A few meters from the panel venue, Broganduje supporters, including underage primary school pupils, were seen protesting, carrying placards, calling the editor a liar. The war against corruption is seen to be the cornerstone of the Buhari administration, which has been in power for over three years. Nigerians are watching with eagle eyes to see what the next steps and what the end results of these allegations will be. Quite an interesting video, isn't it? Indeed. Jaffa Jaffa, welcome to the morning show. Welcome, Mr. Abati. Yes, good morning. Now, you were in uh, Kano recently uh, to testify before the Kano State House of Assembly. Tell us uh, what you went through, what that experience was, and whether or not you feel that uh, the Kano State House of Assembly really means business. Yeah, really, from the look of it, uh, they really meant business. Uh, the fact that they decided to make the hearing uh, public is an also indicator that uh, they really uh, I mean business this time around. Because most of the assemblies in Nigeria, you see that uh, they, they are briefcased by the governor. They do the governor's bidding. They hardly do anything independently or on their own volition without the stamp of the governor. So uh, kind of assembly appears different this time around because uh, the committee, if it were the governor's uh, wish, the committee uh, may not have been constituted in, uh, from the onset. And then um, if it was uh, the governor's wish, uh, the, the hearing would not be uh, made public. And if it was the governor's wish, uh, I should not be invited to testify before the House of Assembly over the uh, authenticity of the uh, video clips because um, everybody knows that, or oh, in the government cycle, everyone knows that it is authentic, it is original, it is not doctored. They even in their own uh, a tiny cycle identified the person who uh, filmed the governor while in the act of taking uh, the bribes. So it is, uh, they know that uh, we are on the course of unraveling the truth. So that is why they're doing their best. They're doing all they could to scuttle it. All the media campaign against the clips, all the propaganda, all the uh, back and forth against uh, my person and then against my publication also. And then against oh, questioning the, the, the authenticity of the clips. It is just mere uh, effort to see how they, they could uh, I uh, whitewash the whole uh, issue. But the reality of the situation is that those clips are original. We wouldn't have uh, published something that is not doctored because we subjected them, them to the rigors of scrutiny, rigors of verification before, before even uh, publishing them. So nobody, that is why as we speak today, nobody took me to court over the, uh, the clips because they know that it is really a bad case which can't be won in any sane society. Well, I mean, uh, about taking you to court, yes, the state government threatened to take you to court, but at the same time, um, the House of Assembly intervened 
and appeal to the state government to allow them to take a look at the uh, allegations. Now, you want the governor prosecuted, but what if at the end of the day, the House of Assembly gives the governor a clean bill of health? Consider that possibility. Then we can return to court. He, he, yes, he, he, he can drag me to court to challenge, uh, to challenge his innocence, to challenge whether he is innocent or not. Because I still stand by my position that those clips are original. If they were not original, we wouldn't have uh, gone ahead to publish them. It's, it's a sting operation that was undertaken more than two years ago. They whistle blow out the person a contractor in Kano, or a lot of contractors in Kano have been complaining about the governor's habit of collecting bribe from contractors from 15 up to some say up to 30 percent uh, a commission from every project executed in the state. One of the contractors is a friend of mine. He complained to me, and I told him that we can't go ahead to run such a story because of the magnitude of the allegations uh, without having a hard facts at our hand. Then he agrees uh, to plant a spy camera on his uh, captain. After planting the spy camera, he kept taking the shots month after month until he got the uh, correct shots, getting the governor's face, about 15 clips. Uh, he captured about 15 clips. Well, during, uh, during the operation, he, during the operation, uh, he gave the governor well well, well over $5, five, five million dollars during the, the, the operation. And he captured most of the bribe, bribe taken uh, as since in those 15 clips. So it is not issue of uh, saying that uh, this, this, these clips are not true, this and that. Nobody can just uh, uh, wake up in a day and just keep all these allegations against a sitting governor and just be working free. Also, I have received several threats uh, to my life, really. But, 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 but standing by the truth, being protected to go to Kano and testify before the committee shows that I have at least some semblance in truth in my testimony. Well, maybe you didn't get a certain uh, point I was driving at. I was saying, is it possible that the Kano State House of Assembly will conduct its investigations and then come out eventually to say, well, there has been a mix-up somewhere. Considering that this is election season, Kano is a major swing state, and the APC, the ruling party, needs Kano. Would this be right, the right time, in your view, you know, uh, to go after the governor of uh, Kano state? Do you see a possibility that there will be a cover-up at the end of the day? Yeah, everything is possible in Nigeria. You can't rule out uh, the possibility of a cover-up, the, pos the possibility of connivance in, at the end of the day. But uh, the, the, the truth will surely rebel. They can take me to court, and I will gladly uh, honor the someone because I stand by the truth, uh, even if the assembly at the end of the day uh, says that they, they made their independent forensic uh, investigation and arrived that the clips were doctored, then we can go to court. The governor can still go to court to prove his innocence in the, in the court of law. But as, in as much as he did not go to court, I will still be insisting that what I have published is the, is the truth. I have not published falsehood against the governor. Mr. Jaffa, let me ask you this. Uh, you had a staunch that you followed for two years uh, as a journalist going for investigative journalism. Uh, you had an objective you wanted to achieve in pursuing the story. First, I want to know what that objective was. Secondly, the day you appeared at the Kano State uh, House of Assembly, there was a protest, uh, people calling you liar. And uh, sadly, children, underage children carrying placards. How would you juxtapose the reaction so far to this commendable report you have done? Would you say you're satisfied and the objective you set out to do has been met? Yeah, yeah, truly, truly, uh, the objective has been um, met, really. The fact that the Assembly has, uh, um, has risen up uh, uh, from its shell to to investigate the matter, really, the objective uh, has been met, at least. And it will also serve as deterrence to other governors, because uh, I have seen a governor that uh, 
was expressing his dismay over the issue because he knows that it is the truth. Uh, it, it was in private, though, really. He was expressing his, uh, his, his dismay over the, over the issue, even um, lamenting over the governor's uh, action, saying that why shouldn't he have done that by proxy? So that is the normal thing in Nigeria. So, so that aside, regarding the reactions in Kano, especially the, 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 the aspect of allowing school, school girls and boys to come out from their classroom and protest against, against somebody who is doing his job, it is really disheartening. It is really disheartening. And that proves the fact that, or the allegation that uh, the governor is engaging underage voters in election process. So it is really uh, saddening. And um, government should, should, uh, the, the federal government should really do something about this because it shouldn't be allowed to go this way because other states can also borrow leave uh, by allowing underage uh, uh, voters to be participating in election, in election process. Really, um, and I'm happy really that the people of Kano, my coming to Kano to testify before the committee, uh, the rousing welcome I received from well-meaning people of the state and um, from the pulse of the people, I know that really I'm by the side of the truth. Uh, that is why the protest against my presence there was only undertaken by underage uh, uh, people, underage school girls and, uh, and, and boys who do not know what is happening. They were not even aware of uh, what they were holding on the placards. Well, you, you say there have been threats to your life. Uh, can you tell us the nature of those threats? And, um, you know, you are staying in a safe house. For how much longer can you afford to stay in a safe house? Yeah, really, as, as, as long as uh, they concluded the investigation, I believe that, uh, or as, uh, you know, time heals. Uh, as, 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 as long as uh, the investigation uh, con is concluded or the matter is settled, I believe that I can walk uh, freely like any other person. But for now, really, I have to look left, right, and center before going out. I walk with trepidation thinking that maybe somebody, I'm becoming paranoid, somebody may have uh, been uh, trailing me. Um, I believe that everything will come to pass uh, as soon as possible. But have you received any direct threats, either to you or to members of your family? Yeah, yes, I, I did receive in my kennel home. The gate man has been complaining that some strange people have been coming to acts of me in the, in the house, which is quite very strange because uh, I only relocated to the house six months ago, and um, even my friends uh, usually call before coming to meet me in the house. And um, only my close friends know that I'm living in that house. So I find it strange that uh, people are coming and uh, asking me, even um, shortly after down prayer, around 5.30 or 6 a.m. in the morning. So it is really strange, and um, I have petitioned uh, the issue to the police, asking them to look at the matter and ensure that my family is uh, uh, secured. You said you were originally approached by a contractor, and other contractors perhaps, uh, about uh, the governor always collecting uh, kickbacks, as it is called. Uh, you also mentioned a certain politician. Now, who is that politician? And two, do you feel you have been used by the politician and the contractor? Do you feel used? No, not, not at all, really, because I refuse to be used by, the, by, by a certain politician who, 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 who wanted to even help me uh, travel outside the country, locate my family there to, 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 to be safer, in a safer uh, uh, climb. Then he asked me that th that uh, arrangement has 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 an ha has a clause really in it that I should not publish the videos until after INEC INEC deadline of substitution of candidate has elapsed. Then I told him that no, I thought you are only helping me as a Nigerian who is in danger to safeguard my life and ensure my security. No, he said no. While I help you, you also have to help us because we are politicians. No, I say no. 
I cannot do that. I'd rather die here in Nigeria than to go and do some political videos of uh, politicians outside the country. Then I just released the videos a day after the arrangement fell. Will you at any point be willing and ready to name the contractors and name the politician? Uh, no, re really, uh, the politician issue is not uh, is not even is not even an issue. But the contractors are uh, beat really uh, because I respect the universal principle of whistle uh, of uh, uh, confidentiality as a journalist, trained journalist. Uh, I cannot disclose uh, the source of my information because if I disclose it today, nobody will contact me tomorrow and uh, seek my confidence while giving me any uh, story. So in difference to this principle, I cannot disclose the source. Mr. Jaffa, for an administration under the President Muhammad Buhari, um, fight, talking so much about fighting corruption and anti-corruption crusader that the president positions himself as, how would you like to see this your story climax? Well, really, um, it is another litmus test for the administration. Uh, if they really mean well for the anti-corruption crusade, uh, the governor should be investigated because uh, I have seen how EFCC has become uh, so proactive in pursuing Ayo Fayoshi's case. Even while he was a governor, they have already concluded things that they have already uh, tidied up their con uh, investigation uh, against it or on him. So in this case, from what we are learning, it's like EFCC and IC, all other anti-corruption agencies have not taken a step to start investigating the matter. Or tidying up the investigation around the case so that once the governor loses immunity, they will easily bolt into action without um, any waste of time. Well, I mean, a view on your own, you know, as a concerned citizen and as a man who has the evidence, have you taken steps to submit a petition to the EFCC or the ICPC as it were? No, really, as a journalist, I publish in my uh, medium. I, I, we normally, journalists hardly write petition if, if something does not pertain their safety or security. So uh, since this issue, other people can petition to the ICPC, EFCC, and um, what have you, all other anti-corruption agencies. But in this case, really, as a journalist, I, stick, I strictly remain on the uh, editorial line of, the, uh, of handling the video clips. Because I am handicapped, you understand? Even if, if, if as a citizen, I can't petition, really. But uh, the best thing to do is for me to publish them. All other things, other people, or CSOs and... Uh, can, can, can carry from there. But for me, it's just to publish and say the truth. Well, the, the, the reason I asked you whether you'd be willing to name the uh, contractor uh, or the politician that approached you is that, OK, let's imagine a scenario in which, you know, the EFCC takes up the matter. There will be need for witnesses. Now, would those persons be willing to come forward, those contractors, who did this thing operation? Would they would be willing to come forward to testify? Have you thought of that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I am still on that issue. I've been discussing the issue with my lawyers, even appearing the the House uh, committee that invited me to Kano uh, has even asked me if I can uh, 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 pro uh, produce the person or the contractor before the committee so that maybe they investigate him or they, uh, they, they question him in camera before the committee so that nobody will see what has happened or see his face. They will just take his testimony. We are still on that, discussing with my solicitors over the issue and see, and I think by next week we'll come up with a conclusion whether to present him, because he is willing, whether to present him before the committee or not. Well, let me put another question to you. When all of this happened and you published that video, one of the commissioners in uh, Kano State, in defending his boss, said he was, he, was, he, wondered what you were, 
you were trying to drive at, because in Kano State, the collection of kickbacks is a standard practice. And uh, why were you targeting the governor, knowing that this is what is done with every contract? What's your reaction to that? Yeah, because I ha I Yes, because I really, it was really saddening um, experience uh, to, for them to resort to name calling, uh, calling me blackmailer and all that, because somebody just said the truth. If I had not gotten the clips, I may not have uh, gone forward to publish the, 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 the story, just the story. Nobody will even care to read the story because, as you said, it is a normal practice in Nigeria collecting kickback by governors. So the, the, what is not normal is getting the, the, the governors caught in the act of collecting the bribe. That is why it is raising dust, the issue is raising dust, that is why the denial and what have you, despite the hard facts. And a lot of people were initially uh, saying that the cliffs do not have the, uh, they do not have voice conversation in them, do not have, uh, I then explained to somebody that uh, Oparovri, CCTV footage of Oparovri does not bear a single sound of gunshot while about 19 people were killed in the act. And the police used that clip to magnify the faces of the actors or the people, the robbers, and arrested them, tracked them and arrested them. So the issue of deadening the voice clips in order to protect the whistleblower or the contractor who, whose voice was also clearly heard in the behind or in the original clip which I give to some media, media houses to also listen and see that uh, we are not uh, raising false alarm. Let so me... this is actually... Uh... Go ahead, finish. Go ahead, you are going to say something. Hello. You are going to say something, you please go ahead. ahead. Okay, sorry for interrupting you there, but I have a question. There's a tendency to politicize um, a lot of things in Nigeria, like Ruben rightly said earlier. Um, you followed this through for two years, you have said. Why now? We are barely four months to the elections. And so when the governor says that this is politicized, this is doctored, don't you think he has a point there? If you did this for two years... He, he only showed me... He, because he took them for over two years ago, and he did not tell me that he has uh, carried out the operation. He remained silent. He only showed me the clips, I think, in January last year. Then after showing me, I've been on his neck, putting pressure on him, telling him that this, this, uh, we are doing this for the public good. There is no criminal intent in it. We are just doing this in order to help the administration fight, fight, fight corruption. Then after convincing him, at uh, just a few weeks ago, in, uh, by the end of uh, this September, he agreed to give me the clips. Just a few weeks after giving me the clips, I run them. Well, so a, there is nothing, they did not last uh, long with me. There is a part of that video that uh, I would like you to clarify. Why would they sitting a governor, the chief executive of a state, collect cash and will be stuffing it under his uh, Agbada or Babariga I mean, the money could have been given to him in a bag. The money could have been given to his uh, ADC. The money could have been given to any of his aides. Why would a governor, you know, collect money in that kind of uh, manner? Did you bother to ask the uh, contractor? No, some governors are different because I know that uh, I have also worked uh, in government. I've worked with Konkoso and Ganduje together. Ganduje as deputy governor, Konkoso as governor. For four years, really, I know what has been going on in government. I know their nature. Some governors can do even worse, really, because if you see them maybe up close and personal, you'll see that they have certain habit with people uh, from the background or outside may not know what is actually happening. So I, I wasn't actually surprised at uh, that scene in which the governor is being directed uh, uh, put this in your pocket, get up, I think they will be better. No, it is just normal thing. Working, inner workings of the uh, government and their habit, really, particularly the, uh, the governor can go to 
that law in uh, taking the money. Well, it's good to mention Senator uh, Rabi Kwankwanso. There are some people who are saying that, uh, in fact, you are an agent of Senator Kwankwanso because, you know, uh, Senator Kwankwanso and the governor, Ganduje, they are not uh, on good terms. So, uh, are yes. You, yeah. So, I think, are you guilty um, as uh, alleged? Yeah, I, I should clarify. Yeah, I should clarify this, that I'm not working uh, uh, for Concorso yeah. since uh, May 29, 2015, that uh, his tenure expires. Uh, I joined Premium Times as assistant editor there. So um, uh, taking you back uh, before even joining there, I think from 2015 to date, I had uh, I had a personal contact or personal meeting with Ganduji for over 10 times. And I only saw Konkoso, I think, twice in nearly four years. I only saw Konkoso twice to just go and greet him as a former boss. So if it is about closeness, I think I'm even more closer to Ganduji than I am to Konkoso. And the relationship, I only worked for Konkoso for four years. While Ganduja, work, uh, they work together with Concorso 20, they've been together 40 years, work together for over 20 years. So because of their closeness, he even allowed him to succeed him, anointed him to succeed him, but allowed me to just start looking for a job. So you can see the closeness. So, so saying that I'm very close to Concorso, um, uh, because I'm close to Concorso, I'm doing this to Ganduja and all that, that is not, it, it, it is untrue. I, just a week before the release of the videos, I, I, I met Kevin um, remarks, Kevin analysis against, the, against Concorso's decision to handpick his ILO as the governorship candidate in Kano State. And I, I expose the fact that the primaries that saw the emergence of the illos, the, the Concorso's illo, was actually held in Concorso's personal residence. Well, I wrote that you. because it is the truth. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Jaffa Jaffa. We've had uh, a very interesting uh, okay, conversation welcome. with you. Thank you. And all the best thank with you, the whistleblowing. Thank, thank you. you yes. It's thank time you. now for a short break.